Hello and welcome to a video on standard form and a nice interesting question to kick things off. How many atoms are there in the human body? So down here we've got a couple of pictures. On the right hand side is an example of an atom. So you can see it's made up of protons, neutrons and electrons. And on the left hand side this is just the composition of atoms in our bodies. So you can see we're predominantly made up of oxygen and then we've got a rather large amount of carbon, hydrogen, and then we've got a bit of nitrogen as well. Uh, so this makes up about 96% or 97% of our human bodies. And then we've just got 3% roughly of uh, other chemical elements. So the question is how many of these atoms roughly are there in the human body? So if we're talking about an average uh, human adult, now I didn't, I don't know this. I've had to Google the answer, and there's obviously lots of different answers on Google. So I'm just going on to one website and taking what they've said, um, and I'm going to write down the answer as a number. So it starts off with a seven, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm just going to skip along. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-six, and twenty-seven. And we are done. This is roughly how many atoms there are in an average adult human. So there are 27 zeros, so we would call this 7 octillion. And even as a maths teacher, I didn't know that. I'd had to look that up. Now, if you think about scientists, they work with atoms all the time and lots of other different chemical elements that are really, really small. So obviously there's going to be a lot of them. Now, we can't write all of these numbers down all the time. There is a much shorter, more concise, much easier way to write down large numbers like this. And it's called standard form. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this number in standard form. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, whenever we write anything in standard form, we always have to start with a base number. And the base number has to be between 1 and 10. So in our situation, the base number is going to be 7. So we're going to start with 7. Now to get this large number, we're going to have to multiply by something. And we always multiply it by a power of 10. So you can see that we're going to have to multiply by 10 quite a lot of times to get this large number. So how many times do we need to multiply by 10 to get this number? Well, if the number was 70, we'd only need to multiply by 10 once. If the number was 700, we'd multiply by 10 twice. If the number was 7,000, we'd multiply by 10 three times. So we just need to look at how many zeros we've got. So we've got one, two, three, and actually I've already said that there's 27 zeros. So we're going to need to multiply by 10 27 times. So you can see we're starting off with 7. We're multiplying by 10 27 times, and that gives us our number. So this here is exactly the same as what I've written in blue, but it's just written in a much more elegant way, and this is called standard form. So we always start with a base, and the base number has to be between 1 and 10. It can't equal 10, it has to be less than 10. So we could say it has to be greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. And then we always multiply by 10 a certain number of times. So you can see if we've got really, really big numbers, if we had like 2,000 zeros, how we write it's not going to get any bigger. The power up here is just going to say 2000. So it's a nice short way of writing really big numbers or really, really small numbers. But we'll come on to that in another video. OK, let's have a look at another interesting question. How far away is the sun from the Earth in meters? So get your predictions in. OK, so it is roughly one five zero. I'm going to put some commas in and then zero, zero, zero. Zero, 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 zero. So not quite a bigger number as we did with the number of atoms, but still quite a large number. So let's just write the units. So this is the number of meters roughly from the Earth to the sun. So again, we could leave it like this, but let's write it in standard form. And remember, with standard form, we need a base number and that needs to be between one and ten. So we're not going to use, you know, 150 or 15. What we're going to use is 1.5. So we need to use these numbers, but the number has to be between 1 and 10. So our base number this time is going to be 1.5. And remember, we're always going to be multiplying by 10. So how many times do we need to multiply 1.5 by 10 to get this number here? 
Well, at the moment, if we've got 1.5, our decimal point would be here. That's 1.5. So if we multiply it by 10 once, that will give us 15. If we multiply it by 10 twice, that will give us 150. So we just need to keep moving our decimal point back. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I always like to do these loops just because it helps me visualize, you know, where the decimal point is. But we've moved that 11 times. Uh, so we're going to multiply by 10 11 times. So this is the exact same number as this, but I've just written it in standard form. So instead of writing 150, what's that? 150 trillion, I think. Well, that's 150,000, 150 million. 100, oh, no, 150 billion. This would be 150 billion meters. Or we could just say 1.5 times 10 to the power 11 meters. OK, let's go through one more scenario. And it involves this nice sunny beach here, which I wish I was on at the moment. So how many grains of sand are there on Earth? OK, so there are roughly. So we're going to start off with 75 and then I'm going to write down 17 zeros. And this number that I've just written out is 7.5 sextillion. So there are roughly 7.5 sextillion grains of sand on Earth. So it's a nice bit of trivia for you there. But more importantly, let's write this number out in standard form and pause the video just so you can have a go at doing, doing it yourself first. So firstly, we need to think about our base number. And our base number, remember, has to be between 1 and 10. So you can see with the numbers we've got, the only number we can use is going to be 7.5. So 7.5 is between 1 and 10. And then we need to multiply by 10 like we always do. And now finally, we need to think about our power. So how many times are we multiplying 7.5 by 10 to give us this number here? So I always put the decimal point in first and then just count back. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 excuse my mess, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 times. So this number written in standard form is 7.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 18. So I'm going to leave it there for this video. It was only an introduction to standard form. I'm going to do many more videos on this topic. And in the next video, we're going to look at some more examples of writing numbers in standard form. And also, if I were to give you a number in standard form like this, would you be able to go back and write it in full? So hopefully that was useful. And thanks again for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.